Continuamos ahora con los ganadores del premio Rafael Manzano de Nueva Arquitectura Tradicional de este año. Antonio María Braga y Alberto Castro Núñez. Muchas gracias. Hola a todos. Um, first thing, we would like you to interrupt us if you feel like it. If you want, put questions and ask things about what we are about what we are saying. We are uh, going here. 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 here? Okay. Um, I believe most of you have seen yesterday the video with uh, some of our works, which we find mo found most uh, significant. But today we are going to show them in a more critical uh, approach. There are, I think these photographs show uh, like most of them or all of them that we are showing here. And uh, we would like, I think we've been speaking a lot about ideas here. Not only Pure ideas, of course, because we, we, we've been talking about vernacular construction systems, uh, uh, lime and stones, and uh, yes, or how do you say it in English? Uh, gypsum. Uh, your special handicraft gypsum with nothing to do with what you buy as gypsum. But the reality of the material civilization, material uh, basis of construction and architecture nowadays is so overwhelming, different, overwhelmingly different, that it puts all our struggle, all our work in the small reality of ideas. Let, maybe I'm not explaining myself very well, but we'll, I'll try to and the, to explain better. This is an avenue in Lisbon, made during the 50s, designed during the 40s, I think. This is what comes after what José Bagaña has shown, has shown you, the very picturesque, romantic, regionalist villas made during the early, the early 20th century and uh, during the Estado Novo, what we call the dictatorship, which had its own uh, uh, style based on what José has shown. I'm not going to repeat. But what, what the regime did was this. Corbusier, hard Corbusier. They tried to do this, to implement this, of course, it had a limited, Portugal is a small country, it had a limited scope, but we had <coughs> cement. We did a lot of Portland cement. We produced it, and this is, we don't have many examples, but this is mostly what was done throughout Lisbon and the main cities in Portugal during the 60s, in different scales, in somewhat different styles, but this is the reality after the Second World War is mostly this. And this led to, we went to the architectural, the architectural school after, after the revolution, and we were taught this. Even after the revolution, there was no change, no different approach. The school was, well, uh, very limited in what we were taught. Yes, I had uh, an experience more stronger than you, because I, I began a little bit earlier. Yeah. And uh, when you went to the School of Architecture at that time, you, sh you should think that uh, architecture was made by schemes, functional schemes, uh, ergonomical schemes, nothing to do with building, real building, or to the... Um, Vitruvian triad of uh, uh, function, 
uh, aesthetics and also um, the the with the um, with and also with the the, the historical uh, uh, construction in Portugal during uh, during uh, the, the time in in history. Well, uh, this is a bit anecdotal because um, we had a teacher. I remember, like I had. I don't know if you were with me at that time, but like two or three months. He taught us how we should draw a kitchen. It says it all. Functionalism was at its highest and purest <laughs> form in the teaching of architecture in Portugal. So we, uh, that teacher then designed, oh, then designed this, uh, this is the new faculty of architecture in Lisbon. Enough said. Okay, <laughs> it was designed by that teacher. He was the head of, of the faculty. Okay, these are this is our first project together. Um, this was taken from uh, from Google, as you see. And uh, when we left school, we worked uh, not by ourselves yet, but we started having small commissions. And what did we do? We went back to the vernacular, not because we knew anybody that is here now, but because it was our terms. It were our terms of reference. We, we, it was. Uh, we want to have a system of thought. We want to know whatever we were taught in, in this, at school did not interest us in any way. So we went to vernacular architecture. This is a seaside town in the, the southwest of Portugal, and we did these buildings. They were really made in 80, in the middle 80s. Concrete structure, hollow bricks, concrete plaques, concrete roof. Still they look like they were there, I don't know, 200 years ago, made of stone. and. And this defined our fate for the next years. We kept on building. This was our first big commission, a court in Villanova de Foscova. It looks very, like a very old building, but our friend Concrete is there. At that time, we began using references to the surrounding architecture of you can say it was some vernacular uh, elements, and uh, uh, this building, although although in a, uh, it's one of our first projects, uh, a public a public building, and uh, we are, we were beginning to understood what uh, uh, what architecture, not only vernacular but also classical. Uh, and uh, with uh, popular architecture influence were. How it was made and the costs of making it. Yes. <laughs> this was, this was uh, two in 85, I think. It, it was designed in 85 building, yes. built during the early 90s, maybe. Uh, the, the, this is an enormous building. This is the, these are the archives of the Cinematheque in Lisbon. Behind this innocent uh, vernacular facade, like an 18th century farm, which had its additions in the 19th century, maybe, lies lie many high-tech <coughs> laboratories for restoring films. And most of all, big uh, warehouses climatized in a very sophisticated way um, so that the films can be protected for ages because they tend to films in, in pellicula, uh, they tend to degradate. They are, everything is inside. And we must confess, we love to provocate, to provocate, can we say? The, the modernists. By this time, we were starting to be seen as enfants terribles, who made this uh, 
traditional buildings. With this one, it was the envy of modernists because it had so much high tech inside. Imagine what they could have done expressing all of it. Thanks to the late director of the Cinematec, João Bernardo Costa, who was a guy who lived in Sintra and loved traditions and all that, we managed to do this. But again, this has a very heavy concrete structure, especially in some of the places that sustain the weight of very heavy machines inside. They are, we don't have photographs of, of that high-tech part because they are not very meaningful. But anyway, we, we, we try to, to build some uh, parts of it with wood uh, in, the, um, in the roofs, uh, with timber wood in the roofs. Very little. Very little, but <laughs> it's the beginning of... It of was the beginning of our experiments with uh, wooden structures, in a way. This is the last phase. This is more recent. And then uh, we had a few commissions in uh, Odmira. This is a town hall uh, we saw in the video. This building was supposed to be completely destroyed except for the facade and the little tower beha behind. And it, the project indeed had uh, a um, glass facade in the back. It was the end of the 90s. It was the big expo in Portugal. The apex, the apex of uh, new modernism in Portugal. Every little town wanted to have something like the Expo 98 in Lisbon, but not these people. And so the mayor was a very sensitive person and he gave us the project and we saved the building. It, was, it, was, it had started, demolition had started when we started designing and we had managed to stop it. We were putting back doors and windows that had been taken had been taken away. off, taken off, and we were putting them back and numbering back by ourselves because nobody did it. And we used the same building systems and materials that were in the original in, building. In the main building, not, yes. not in these blue ones. These are concrete buildings too. The, the extensions, they, we had to do them in concrete because again, there was no possibility of starting a fresh building, a new building in traditional materials. And, so, yeah, and, and this one too. This was a vacant plot in front of, of the town hall. Uh, we did it. There is this rather nice building in concrete. Concrete arches, everything is concrete. I stress the concrete <laughs> because then we made the library. Again, it has a few, a few yes. wooden structures, yes. but very little. The we tower, made, the tower has a, a wooden roof. Yeah, the tower has a wooden roof, and the the floor is also in wood. But the rest, most of the rest, and the loggia also. Yeah. And, and the columns, the Tuscan columns, are concrete. Although it's Tuscan columns. And we then we had this commission for the big museum. And we started working with Leon as a consultant for this museum. And Leo pushed us very hard. You must put wood on as, man, as many roofs as you can there. And he pushed, we had a very, very tight schedule for, for the, this project. And he still, we, we work by fax. And the budget Leon was very low. Also. Yeah. That's important. Hey, the budget was very low, but still Leon pushed. I remember at being at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, designing. Up, oh, sorry. Um, we were designing this, the, 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 the roof, the wooden structure of this roof, which is, I don't know, is it? It's not here? No. No, no oh, sorry. It was in the video yesterday. Okay, but this is the museum, Modring, as most of you know it already. Um, and it has, much more wooden structures on roofs, not on walls. On walls, uh, uh, I mean, walls are all concrete and pillars and hollow bricks again. We couldn't. 
Anyhow, we try to give it an expression of a traditional construction building. Yeah, we always as did it, uh, in this one and the others. And we had more. We were more more aware of of uh, of the the detailing that was needed to to obtain this effect. And and uh, it's, uh, we can say we 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 learn a lot with with the comments by Leon Greer, but we also studied a lot and tried to to learn again how to. Or to design a, a building then, in a different way. Then there was the school. In front of the museum, there was the school. <coughs> school for uh, techniques of uh, restoring things uh, like tiles and uh, paintings and things. This is, well, there are some drawings where you, you can see the wooden structures that we used more and more and more. But what we really wanted to do was to work with less and less concrete, or no concrete at all. It was not the case in the Cinematheque in Lisbon. We still had to use a lot of concrete here. And because it has big spaces that, uh, well, uh, still there are, again, wooden structures on roofs, as you see. There is an iron structure with a, with a Here. wooden. Yeah. This is iron wooden with wood. This is an, a library in the Alentejo in Portel. The, the interior. And for these same people of that library, we managed to do our um, first building without Portland cement. There is no, that, that we know. We were not always there, <laughs> and the builder might have. <laughs> but that we know there is no Portland cement in this building. There is only lime mortar, lime plaster, um, brick. Brick, uh, the, the bricks uh, are not traditional because, uh, of course, just we would have used traditional bricks, but we had to do to use uh, an industrial alternative which is called uh, what is called Th thermal bricks that come from Germany, and you can make uh, uh, resistant. Uh, you can make thick walls that uh, load bearing, load bearing thick walls with. Uh, those bricks, you can do it. You can really but do it, and that's what we did here. We used uh, artisanal bricks for the uh, arches. For the arches. That were made by, by local people. Yeah. These arches are, are made with uh, handmade bricks. But everything is kept together by lime, by lime mortars. There's not, no cement there. You see? This sort of um, defy the concepts that are widespread, popular concepts, that if you don't make a building with concrete and steel, it falls. Because I believe 95% of the Portuguese population, and most of them are engineers and architects, think on that frame. No concrete, no safety. Of course, we can't make 20 stories or 10 even without that, but we really don't need that. Interiors. Uh, this is a part of the, the working phase. This is a house I, uh, I made for myself. On the, actually, this was the laboratory for, for the other one. As this was for myself, I decided to use the thermal bricks, the lime, no concrete. I, I told the guys who were working there, if, if I find a single paperback of Portland cement inside, you're fired immediately. Uh, I told them, very, uh, uh, and it, the house is there, it doesn't have a crack. Nothing has gone wrong with it. I had to sell it later. Um, 
but uh, parts of it are unfinished. There's a structure there for like a small uh, stufe, uh, whatever. Conservatory. Co uh, kind of. Conservatory. Yes. Uh, this is the interior. Oh, this is the building phase. The arches, these are very wide arches, three and a half meters. They are um, made with lime and bricks. Oops, finished. Um, just a few more words. While we are here talking about our nice ideas and our nice buildings and our nice uh, vernacular building systems, concrete factories, steel factories, are making 99.99% of the buildings in this world and providing our CO2 in the atmosphere with, I believe, as, together with all the industrial materials associated, they must be providing us with almost 20% of the CO2. It's not just the cars and the ships and the planes. So that we can make buildings that don't last, that don't perform well in many situations. Uh, not even, I'm not even going to talk about the urban situations, but they crack, they have pathologies, they have complex systems. And I think this is the main contradiction that we have. Our struggle will not end until cement is finished. I used to say, if industri industrial agriculture is called the Green Revolution, it's another great, great revolution in mankind that happened during the 20th century. If we finished industrial agriculture, I think there would be millions of deaths. But if we finished Portland cement fabrication, if we finish steel rods fabrication, nobody would die. I don't think it is needed for anything. We just go back to the old ways of building and designing buildings. And we get ready, uh, get rid, sorry, of the greatest percentage of the pollution and anti-ecology that is associated with our, with our activity. And, and we will we'll have a, a much beautiful environment because you cannot do ugly buildings with traditional construction. 